is a classic pounded pumpkin. It's got a prince and some dragons and even an evil stepmother. Once upon a time. In a kingdom not so far away, there lived a humble widowed merchant and his daughter, Cindershy. Cindershy was a kind-hearted filly, beloved by her father and all the little animals of the forest near their home. As the years passed, Cindershy grew lovelier, while her father grew lonelier. Since the passing of Cindershy's mother, he had sought out a new mare to wed. To his misfortune, he happened upon the Lady Rarity and her two horrid daughters, Paella and Spikeina. <laughs> Spike in a dress? <laughs> it's Princess Trixie Sparkle all over again. Hey, who are you calling horrid? The merchant married Lady Rarity and introduced her to Cindershy as her new stepmother. On the surface, Lady Rarity was a poised gentle mare with refined tastes and impeccable manners. However, she spent most of her time doting on her two daughters. Try as she might, Cindershy's attempts to grow close to her new stepmother had failed. One tragic evening, Cindershy's father had grown gravely ill. His faithful daughter stayed close at his bedside, caring for him as best she could, while his new wife kept her distance. He declared his undying love to his daughter before passing away in her embrace. This angered Lady Rarity and a newly formed hatred for Cindershy had begun to grow in her cold and cruel heart. She seized the family's fortunes and squandered it on her daughters, forcing Cindershy to be a servant in her own home. Despite the cruelty of her new step family, Cindershy maintained her kind heart and loving nature. She cooked and cleaned without even uttering a word of complaint and kept a secret hope in her heart that someday this nightmare would end and she would be happy at last. Early one morning in Cindershy's tiny attic bedroom, three mischievous little mice scampered and scurried around the floor searching for something. When the clock tower told the hour, the three mice squeaked in surprise. Quick! We got hot force wakes up! The first little mouse said to the others before the three of them darted into what appeared to be a long pink shawl. Cindershy had woken from the toll of the clock, but was caught off guard when she felt three little critters bury themselves into her tail. Oh my! She said, lifting her tail with her hooves to see the three little mice dangling from it. Ugh, great hiding place, Whisker Bloom. How was I supposed to know her tail? Maybe we can jump and make a run for it! Hold on there. Don't worry, little mice. I won't hurt you. Cindershy whispered, setting her tail and the mice down on her bed. I've never seen you three here before. My name's Cindershy. What's yours? My name's Whiskerbloom. I'm Cheesy Bell. Okay, so we're just gonna trust this pony who can talk to animals right away, huh? And what about you? Cindershy asked, waiting patiently for the mouse's answer. The third mouse sighed and muttered under her breath. I'm Mouselu. That's not your name! Did you forget your own name? Fine. It's Rattaloo. But I am not a rat! Rattaloo clarified, giving Cindershy a dark glare. I think that name's lovely. What brings you three to my attic? We're the cutie mouse crusaders, and we're on a quest. Oh? A quest for what exactly? We had no idea, but we'll know it when we see it. Oh, well, then you are more than welcome to continue your quest here. Though, I must warn you, my stepmother has a dreadfully awful cat. Perhaps you should keep your quest to the attic. Or we could just go to a different house. Nah, I'll lock it here. <laughs> Please, what kind of quest would it be if we didn't have to defy a little death now and again? Before Cindershy had the chance to respond, a loud and annoying call could be heard from downstairs. Cindershy! Cindershy! Oh dear, looks like the others are awake. You three sit close by me, just in case. I have to get breakfast started right away. Cindershy said, letting the mice climb back into her tail while she busily got dressed. Cindershy raced down the steps of the attic to begin her daily routine of chores. 
While she prepared the breakfast as quickly as she could, she had to endure the incessant screams of her impatient stepsisters. Joyce, do the ever shut up? They're hurting my ears. How they like it if we screamed at them all morning? We don't know how you can stand it, Cinder Shy. Oh, it, it's not too bad. Cinder Shy, coming! Whoa! The mice shouted, barely able to cling onto Cinder Shy's tail as she hurried up the stairs. I'm sorry, little friends, but please don't let them see you. Cinder Shy whispered before pushing the bedroom door open. Oh, look who finally showed up! What were you doing anyway? Just making your breakfast, Paella. Cinder Shy said as she placed a tray of food on her stepsister's bed. Well, you need to be faster, much faster. I like my breakfast hot and ready for me when I wake up. Is that so much to ask? You make it seem like baking is so hard. Oh, look, pancakes! Paella said, face planting into the pancakes. The cutie mouse crusaders popped their little heads out of Cinder Shy's tail to get a good look at her ungrateful sister. Check out that pony's crazy mind. What is she wearing? I'm a mouse, and even I have better table manners than that. While Paella ate, Cinder Shy tiptoed towards the door. Hey, I wasn't done yelling at you. Where was I? Faster breakfast baking. That's right, baking. I can bake circles around you. It's not that hard, you know. Oh yeah. Well, if it isn't so hard, then why don't you try it sometime? I don't need to try it. I have tried it, and I'm much better. Thank you very much. But I'm not the servant here. I'm the antagonist, and that means I have to be impossible and rude. Huh? Wait. What? I ah,、uh, I mean,、uh, laundry. Yes, I have laundry I need done. Of course, Paella. But um, what needs to be washed? Cinder Shy said, slipping out of her sister's room quietly. Did did you girls hear that? She heard me from all the way over there. Does this entire house of ponies understand us? That was just a coincidence, Redalu. Only Cinder Shy can understand us. What? But I just heard her. Shh, we're going into the other sister's room. The three little mice ducked back into Cinder Shy's tail as she entered the other bedroom. It's about time. I'm sorry for the delays, my Kina. I have your breakfast for you. Wow, that is one ugly looking pony. Uh huh. Those sure are interesting. Uh, hoofs. Check out that tail. What do you think, Redaloo? Redaloo. Whisker Bloom and Cheesy Bell searched around Cinder Shy's tail until they heard Redaloo's shout from inside Spikeena's bedroom. Cinder Shy shut the door and moved on to the third bedroom. Although her stepmother did not shout at her as her stepsisters had done, it was her wrath that frightened her the most. Use for your best way for me out here. Old Pleasant is in there with stepmother, and she'll spot you for sure. Cinder Shy whispered. Whisker Bloom and Cheesy Bell leapt from her tail and raced back towards the second sister's room. Hang on, Bradley, we're coming for you. Cinder Shy tapped lightly at her stepmother's door. Come in. Good morning, stepmother. Cinder Shy whispered. She passed by Opalescence, who snarled and swiped at her with her paw. I'm not so sure there's anything good about it. Lady Rarity said, examining the food that was placed before her. Did you remember to finish the sweeping? Yes, stepmother. Good. Today I need you to polish the silver, clean the carpets and the drapes, dust the furniture, clean the sheets and the blankets on the bed, and groom my little Opal Wopo. Before Cinder Shy could give her response, she was interrupted by the loud and terrified scream of her stepsister Spikeena. A rat! A rat in my room! Disgusting little creature! A rat! Mother! Spikeena burst into the bedroom and up to her mother's bedside. She pointed a claw at Cinder Shy accusingly. 
She did it, Mother! She brought the little vermin in here! I've seen her with all kinds of animals! Punish her! What's going on? Why wasn't I invited? Are we screaming? I love screaming! From the doorway, the four of them could clearly see the little mouse crusaders assisting Rattaloo, who it appeared had been through quite an ordeal. A rat? A rat? I am a mouse! Let it go, Rattaloo! Oh, Vermin! Get them, Opo! Get them all! Oh no! Run, little friends! The mouse crusaders darted away quick as lightning. Opalescence was not too far behind. Oh, you're in so much trouble! Uh, I have no idea where they came from. Clearly, this place just isn't clean enough if you're letting vermin in our house. In addition to your regular chores, I expect you to sweep again, wash and scrub every inch of the floor, not a crumb of food out of place, not a speck of dust to be found, nothing. Do I make myself clear? Yes, ma'am. Oh, and Cindershire, dear, if my daughters or I find another creature in this house again by your doing, you'll go without supper for a week. Oh, snap! Pyla laughed just as her mother used her magic to slam the door on Cindershire. Hours later, Cindershire was hard at work while the cutie mouse crusaders did what they could to help. It wasn't difficult for them to outwit Lady Rarity's cat, and they took great pride in their ability to do so. They felt terrible for causing Cindershy so much grief with her awful family. All three offered to help with her chores. Sometime that afternoon, there was a short knock at the door. Cindershy opened it curiously to find one of the prince's royal messengers. The messenger struggled to hold on to her trumpet and blasted it right in Cindershy's ear. The messenger smiled and fumbled to pick up her trumpet, flying to the next home where Cindershy could hear her blowing her horn loudly in some pony else's face. Cindershy was so elated at the possibility of the gala, she didn't even notice the glares her family gave her when she barged in on their lunch to tell them the news. Cindershy, what's gotten into you? You know not to disturb our meal. Yes, stepmother, I know, I just... Oh, what's this? Let me see! No, it's mine! Hey, Give it to me! Hey, Give it back! I want to see it! it. Give it back! You I want to see it! Give it back! Oh, it's my, my turn. turn! As the pair of them fought over it, Lady Rarity calmly levitated the invitation from her daughters and read it silently to herself. Oh my! This is wonderful news! Uh, girls! Girls! Stop this bickering at once! It's a message from the prince! The prince? He's inviting us to his royal gala this evening! A party? I love party g g galas Oh, I've always dreamed of marrying the prince. Um, did you read the part on there about all uh, the eligible mayors? Yes, indeed I did. What? That can't be true. Mother, you can't let her go with us. Now, now, girls, Cindershy has a point. I'll tell you what, Cindershy. If you can finish all of your chores and help your sisters get ready, provided you can find something to wear, you may come with us as well. Of course! I will, stepmother. Thank you, thank you! Yay! I mean, boo! Cindershy's happiness soon faded, however, when she realized the length of the chores list she still needed to complete. Every moment she got closer to finishing, her stepsisters demanded her attention in helping them prepare for the gala. Therefore, the Cutie Mouse Crusaders took matters into their own paws. Cindershy needs our help, Crusaders! We have to find a way of getting her to the gala! But how can we do that? We're just three little mice! Maybe we could make a dress for her! Us? Make a dress? Are you sure about that, Cheese Bale? Aw, oh, come on, Whisker Bloom! How hard can it be? We just gotta use one of her old ones and make it look, you know... Better! Yeah, better! Well, alright then, if you think so. 
The Crusaders made their way to Cindershy's meager closet to find nothing but old rags. They looked at them and then back at each other, unsure which to beautify. Oh, wow! So many choices. How about this one? It doesn't have as many holes as the other ones do. It's perfect! It is? Yeah! All we need is some ribbon, maybe some lace, sequins... And where the hell are we supposed to find all that stuff? In her stepsister's room, of course! If they can't be nice to her, they may as well be useful for something. Well, what do you think? If it means ripping apart some of that ugly pony's dresses, <laughs> I'm totally in! Mine too! Let's make a dress she'll never forget! and destroy personal property in the process. Yeah! yeah! By early evening, Cindershy had lost all hope of going to the gala. Even though all the chores had been completed and her family was all ready to go, she knew that she didn't have time to modify anything from her wardrobe. Her hoof steps were slow and her ears matted against her head when she finally reached the attic. Cindershy opened the door and was taken aback when the three mouse crusaders jumped from their hiding places, shouting, Surprise! Cindershy gaped at the gown before her, unable to find the words. Do you like it? Oh my, um, it's... Amazing. Well, I've never seen anything like it. Cindershy said, trying her best not to hurt their little mouse feelings. The truth was, the dress was a mess. Ribbons and lace were roughly sewn in awkward places. Gemstones were haphazardly placed throughout the dress, and random chunks of fabric were sewn onto it. It was apparent that three very different mice designed three very different dresses and then combined it together to create the horror before her now. Try it on! Try it on! Cindershy obliged. She modeled the dress for the three mice, two of whom were overjoyed. You are beautiful! Right from the gala! Wow, we really suck as seamstresses. Oh, it's not that bad, Rattaloo. Besides, it's the thought that counts. Come on, it's time to go! Look, the carriage is waiting! Cindershy looked from the dress to the door. She hesitated, but decided it was worth a try. She hurried down the steps, calling out to her step family. Wait for me! Please wait! Lady Rarity and her daughters were just on their way out when they turned to see Cindershy racing towards them. Cindershy, don't be silly. You couldn't have had time to make yourself presentable. <laughs> you, you look worse than Spikina. <laughs> and that's saying something. Hey! Does that mean I can't come? I... I don't even know where to begin, darling. I think you were better off in the rags. Do... Do I rip it up because the rats used some of my stuff on it? Ugh, mice! Rattaloo shouted from the banister above, alerting Opalescence. Oops. No, no, I, I think that might actually improve it. I think that gown already slaughtered itself. Come, girls, the prince awaits. Lady Rarity said. She and her two daughters laughed themselves silly as the carriage pulled them away from the house, leaving a broken-hearted Cindershy behind. Cindershy burst into tears, running from the house to the backyard where she finally collapsed, crying on a little stone bench. Moments later, she was joined by the Cutie Mouse Crusaders. But I don't get it. I thought we did a good job. Maybe we gave it too much lace? Or Raven. Or everything. It's not your fault, little friends. You were just trying to help me. I guess I'm just not meant to go to the gala or meet the prince. Now, now, I wouldn't go thinking that just yet. An unfamiliar voice said. Cindershy lifted her head from her hooves and looked around for the source. Much to her amazement, a pony appeared out of thin air before her in a shimmering dress and holding a bright sparkling wand. There are no appropriate words to describe how I feel about this here getup, but that's not the point. <clears throat> Cindershy, I've heard your cries and have looked into your heart. Because you are so kind and pure, I will grant you your heart's desire. Wait, who are you? Oh, right. 
Why, I'm your fairy apple mother, of course. I didn't know I had a fairy apple mother. Apparently, you do. Have you thought of what you most desire, Cindershy? Yes, of course. You have but to ask. I want my parents back. You want... Wait, what? Whoa, ho, ho. Now hang on a second. I thought you're supposed to want to go to the gala. But you said what I most desire. I want to see my father again above all else. Well, uh... Gosh, I guess that's quite the plot hole here. Can we just, uh, pretend that you most desire to go to the gala? I... I suppose... I do want to meet the prince. Great! Now that I can do. Uh, but before I do, I'm gonna need me some supplies. Now, let's see, uh, do you have an apple tree here somewhere? Yes! It's right over there. Good, good. Go pick one, would you? Cindershy didn't hesitate. She retrieved the apple and held it up to her fairy apple mother. Uh, go ahead and put that on the ground there and give me some room. Cindershy and the Crusaders backed away from the apple while her fairy apple mother held her wand above it. Now, uh, there are some words I have to say. Uh, bippity, no, no, wrong network. Uh, Appledy, bappledy, zap. Fairy apple mother waved her magic wand and the apple on the ground began to shake and mutate. It grew larger and larger, hollowing itself out and growing all sorts of new features. By the time it was done, the apple had become a marvelous carriage. Cindershy gasped in awe and excitement, reaching out her hoof just to make sure it was real. It still resembled an apple and smelled just as sweet as one, too. Do y'all happen to have any little critters about? What am I talking about? You're full of Cindershy. Of course you have critters nearby. I need some mice. What do you need mice for? Don't worry, no harm will come to him. Come on out, little friends. With a wave of my magical mm, doohickey and reciting the magic words, I will transform these mice into... Oh, wait a minute. I can't turn them into horses because that'd just be ponies, right? Oh, well, shoot. I guess that wasn't completely thought through. Oh, what else can pull ponies? Or, er, let's see, uh, how about... Dragons? An apple carriage pulled by dragons. Eh, that seems stranger. Dragons it is! Appley, Bapley, Zip! In a flash of light, the mice were transformed into large, sleek looking dragons. Wow, well, Cheezabelle, you are positively terrified! And look at you, Whisker Bloom! I've never been so terrified of you in my life! Hey, what about me? Why didn't your spell work on me? Because I used a spell for mice, of course. Don't you worry, Rattaloo. I have just a thing in mind for you. But uh, I am a mouse! Happily, babbly, zap! Rattaloo opened her eyes slowly, excited and afraid to see what she had become, only to find out she hadn't changed. Wait, you didn't do anything. Of course I did. You're much bigger now. You can be the coach rat, or mouse. You know, guide the others and such. That's it? Rattaloo objected before she was magicked away to the apple slice seat on top of the carriage, holding the reins for her two newly dragonified friends. Now let's see, I've got the carriage and the dragons and the coach mouse thing. What am I forgetting? Um, maybe if you don't mind. No, no, I can remember, don't help me. Huh. What was that last thing? It's not that I don't appreciate the dress the mice made for me, but... Oh, right! Right! The dress! Maybe I could just clean up the one you wear. Whoa-ho-ho! -ho. What? What? What happened to this thing? You live in a house with Rarity and she let you walk out looking like that? Um, yes? Guess you see something new every day. Alright, uh... How about we, um... Turn it... Green? No, uh, purple. No, uh, what's in this season? Plaid? Sweet Celestia, I made it worse. Uh, maybe we should cut it short? Longer. Definitely longer. Uh, shoot, I was not cut out for this role. Unicorns wouldn't need no magic stick or silly words. Okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. What just happened? Why is everything black and white? And not moving? Pinky? 
Where did you come from? How did you get here? Fourth wall. Not important. Here, I got you this. It's the design for a dress for Cindershy. Fourth? What? Oh, hi. This does look nice. Who drew this? Rarity! Duh! But I thought... Don't question it, Applejack! I gotta go. It's almost my turn to dance with the prince. Oh, he's just so handsome. Bye! Pinky? Pinky? Where'd you go? Um, are you saying the dress should be pink? Uh, nope. Looks like it's supposed to be blue. Alright, let's just go with it. Apple dee, bible dee, zap! The magic surrounded Cindershy and she was lifted off the ground. Moments later, she reappeared wearing a beautiful gown with matching glass horseshoes. This is beautiful! I've never felt so amazing in all my life! Thank you! The glass horseshoes are kind of fragile, don't you think? Are you complaining about this dress too? No! No, I... I can make it work. It's beautiful. Good. Hop on in, Cinder Shy. Your prince awaits. Oh, wait. I forgot to tell you. You need to be home by the stroke of midnight. Because that's when all this magic is going to wear off. Midnight? May I ask why? I don't know. Ask Paella when you see her. She seems to know all the ins and outs of what's going on here. For some reason, my magic isn't permanent like unicorn magic. All the more reason why I shouldn't be playing this part. Anyway, you best be going now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't mention it, Sugar Cube. Fairy Apple Mother said as the carriage pulled out of the garden and began its journey to the castle. Good. Can I take this here dressing off now? I should have just given her mine. Meanwhile, at the royal gala, the prince was about to make his royal appearance. His right hoof pony, the Grand Duke, made his way to the center of the grand staircase and cleared his throat. <clears throat> the royal trumpet sounded, and the gala guests all directed their attention to him. My lords and ladies, I am pleased to welcome you here to the Prince's Gala. As many of you are aware, the Prince has been charged by the King to select his bride from those eligible mares in attendance tonight. At the Prince's request, every mare is to line up around the ballroom and wait her turn to dance. By the gala's conclusion, one lucky mare will be selected as his bride. So, without further ado, I introduce you all to this evening's festivities, the Prince! <coughs> After a long moment of silence, all eyes shot back to the Grand Duke in confusion. Ahem, his royal majesty, the Prince! You forgot, awesome, spectacular, radical, amazing! <sighs> His Royal Majesty, the awesome, spectacular, radical, something amazing prince! Oh, yeah! Hello, Random Fairy Tale Kingdom! Is every pony ready to have the most awesome, amazing gala ever? Your Highness, I'm sure you remember the King's request to be cordial, kind, and professional this evening. He expressly forbade you to. Oh, come on, Dookie! I'm just having a little fun, Prince Dash said as he walked past a throng of adoring mares. <laughs> hey there, looking good. How you doing? I am the Grand Duke, not Dookie. Perhaps if we organize each eligible mare in a line, we can give each of them time to dance with you before you make your selection. The Grand Duke offered, following close behind Prince Dash and having to keep the other ponies from getting too close. It's like I always say, Your Highness. Organization is the key to any successful- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Books and learning and magic and stuff. Tell you what, Dookie. You do that, and I'm gonna go mingle with those cute mares over there. Prince Dash said, zipping away from the Grand Duke quick as lightning to cozy up to a pair of mares. Any pony wanna dance with the heir to the throne? <sighs> but that's what I'm saying. You must go about this in an orderly fashion or every mare will get a chance to... Uh, Lighten up, old-timer, will ya? It's a gala. Go drink some punch or dance or something. You do dance, don't you, Dookie? I'm sure one of these mares would want to be swept off her hooves. Don't worry about a thing. I'm awesome. I got this. As the mare swarmed around the prince, Cindershy had finally reached the gates of the castle. She made her way to the entrance and smiled, taken in by the beauty of the castle ballroom. 
From not too far away, Prince Dash caught a glimpse of Cindershy as she entered and his mouth fell open. Who is that? I don't know. You're the one who said not to take names when the guests arrived despite my several protests. That was a rhetorical question. Here, take my crown. It's just getting in the way. Oh, and uh, take care of these mares for me too. <laughs> Thanks. Prince Dash's departure was met with a chorus of disappointed sighs and grumbles, and all eyes quickly zeroed in on the Grand Duke, looking for an explanation. Uh, there's no need to get upset, ladies. I'm sure the prince will return very soon. Prince Dash made his way to Cindershy with single-minded determination. He'd never seen a mare so lovely. Once he'd flown to her side, he bowed low before asking, May I have this dance? Cindershy smiled, honored that a stranger would be so forward with her. Although she still didn't know where the prince was, she was taken by this stranger and accepted his offer. Cindershy had never learned to dance, but it didn't seem to stop her from gliding across the ballroom with Prince Dash. As the pair of them danced, the other mares could only stare in disappointment. None more so than Lady Rarity and her two daughters. Who does she think she is anyway? She's being incredibly selfish if you ask me. Other ponies want to turn too. Strange. I can't quite place it, but I feel as if I've seen her somewhere before. That's because you have, silly! That's Cindershy! Hush, Piello, Mommy's concentrating. Who could that be? Oh, come on! She's not even wearing a mask! It's not that hard to tell that that's our sister, Cindershy. You're just jealous that somebody else is dancing with him. You're making up wild stories for attention like you always do, Piella. Shut up, Spikina! You're stupid! Am not! Are too! Am not! Are too! Quiet! Both of you! Perhaps the Grand Duke will know who she is. Come along, you two, and please try not to embarrass me. Yes, yes mother. Excuse me, uh, you there, Duke fellow? Not the face! Oh, <laughs> please forgive the outburst. Prince Dash had me mitigate a few angry mares, and I fear they got the better of me. How is it I can help you? That mare, the, the one he's dancing with, who is she? Uh, I have absolutely no idea, madam. I tried to get him to be more organized about all this, but would he listen? No, he'd rather call me Dookie or Egghead and go gallivanting off on another one of his quests to slay some monster or other, and I'm left to endure the king's wrath. Is it fair? Most certainly not. I'm a duke, not a babysitter. Someone's got to know who that is. Meanwhile, Cindershy and the prince had danced themselves away from the jealous crowds and into the castle gardens. When they finally looked away from each other, Cindershy gasped in delight at the beauty around her. I take it you like the garden? Like it? It's the most exquisite garden I've ever seen! Oh, I bet you get all kinds of little animals running around. Yeah, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. I am. I really am. Cool! Well, uh, then you should come here whenever you'd like. Oh, how I'd love to! I'd spend all day exploring the flora and fauna of this magical place. You know, there's this thing I have to do tonight, and it's kind of lame. But after meeting you, I think maybe I might have actually made the decision about... <gasps> it's midnight? Yeah? So what? Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. I, I'm sorry, but I have to go. I have to go now. But why? Prince! I, I haven't met the prince yet, and I was looking forward to that. Thank you for a wonderful evening! The prince? But don't you know that I'm... Goodbye! Cindershy called, running as fast as she was able to in her glass horseshoes. Wait! No, don't go! Cindershy knew the handsome stranger wasn't far behind. She continued running, her heart beating faster with every toll of the clock tower's bell. She raced down the front steps, but in her haste, she had forgotten how fragile her footwear was. She stepped down hard on the stone, and one of the glass horseshoes shattered. Oh my! Thinking fast, Cindershy removed the other horseshoe before it too would shatter. From behind her, she could hear Prince Dash gaining. She squeaked <gasps> in fright and continued down the steps. Whiskerbloom, Cheesy Bell, Rattle, where are you? We're here! Oh my, you're mice again. The magic must be wearing off fast. 
faster than I thought. Wait! Who's that? Never mind. I can't let him see me like this. Quickly, friends, climb onto my tail. He must flee before he sees me. Sees you in what? The dress we made you? Show him how pretty you are in that one. No time! Cindershy said. She scooped her little mice friends into her hooves and ran along the path back to her home. Moments later, Prince Dash had finally made it outside, but to his disappointment, the mysterious bear had vanished. The Grand Duke was not far behind, gasping and wheezing for air. Your Highness, what about the other mares who... Never mind the other mares, Dookie. I want that mare, the mysterious mare who has stolen my heart. Look, she even left one of her horseshoes behind. It's a sign. A sign? More like a sign that those shoes were a clear hazard to begin with. No matter what it takes, I will find that mare and I will make her my princess. All right, if you're sure. What's her name? I don't know. Well, where does she live? No clue. How about her main color? Her coat color? The color of her dress? That's funny. I don't remember. Then how do you expect to find her? <laughs> I don't. But you just said... I expect us to find her. Come with me, Dookie. We will scour the kingdom looking for the mare whose hoof fits this glass horseshoe. What? Are you crazy? There's bound to be hundreds of mares with that hoof size in this kingdom. But only one of her. Yes, but that doesn't solve our problem at all. <sighs> all right. I will have the royal stable host get your carriage, my lord, and we will set out to find the mayor of your dreams, who you only dance with for ten minutes and know nothing about. We leave at dawn! Dawn? Why dawn? She can't be far from here, sire, and with all the other guests still in a ballroom, don't you think it will be easier to find her if we left now? Dawn, dookie! I did not sign up for this! The next morning, Prince Dash and the Grand Duke began scouring the kingdom for the mysterious mayor. As the Grand Duke had predicted, many mares' hooves could fit in the glass horseshoe. Those whose hooves did fit were promptly sent to the castle to await Prince Dash's decision. Your Highness, please. We have not slept since the night before the gala. We're tired. We're delirious. You just sent three mares to the castle who had completely different eye colors. I'm beginning to think this is a lost cause. Their eye colors might have been different, but they could be my love. One of them was in her 80s, sire. <gasps> I do not discriminate based on age, Dookie. You should be ashamed of yourself, degrading older mares in such a way. But we're looking for the mare you danced with last night. I know for a fact that she was young. Even I could tell you that much. We can rule out some of them later, Dookie. For now, let's just go to the next house. Besides, there can't be that many houses in the kingdom, right? We've been to, like, 40 already. There are 100. Only 100 houses? <laughs> we could totally do that. No, your majesty. 100,000 houses in your kingdom. Whoa. Uh, on second thought, let's make this one the last house. Fortunately for Cindershy, the last house that the prince was going to visit was her own. Unfortunately, however, she was not able to see him when he arrived, as her evil stepmother had cruelly locked her away in her attic before his arrival. She didn't want Cindershy to have any chance at all of marrying the prince, and was worried that her pretty face would distract from her own two daughters. Unable to do anything, Cindershy wept in her attic prison while her little mice friends watched sadly from below. We got to do something! Hmm... That prince sure does sound a lot like the handsome stranger Cindershot danced with last night. That's it! The handsome stranger must be the prince! Oh yeah? And how do you know that? You didn't see the prince or the handsome stranger. But don't you see, girls? We've been on quest for something and never knew what that quest was. Maybe our quest is to reunite Cindershot with our love. And the only way to do that is to get the key. Well... It's worth the shot. I'm in. But what's the plan? I've got one! Whisker Bloom announced, then pulled her friends closer to whisper it to them. Meanwhile, downstairs, the prince and the duke were letting Spikina try on the glass horseshoe. I'm telling you, sire, the shoe does not fit this one. Of course it fits! I wore it last night! How could it possibly not fit me this morning? 
She has a point, Dookie. Why wouldn't the shoe fit the next morning? Oh, for the love of Celestia, will the next pony please try it on now? While every pony was distracted, the Cutie Mouse Crusaders had made their way down towards the stepmother. They noticed she had hung the key to Cindershy's room on a hook on the wall. Sadly, the hook was too far to reach. Now what? Now we wait for Redwood to wake up Opal Oasis. Trust me, Cheese Bale, it's gonna work. Just make sure to stand right here under the key. Not too much longer, the pair of mice heard the sound of Rattaloo screaming and Opalescence chasing. Rattaloo provoked Opalescence to chase her around outside before cleverly directing her toward the wall that held the key. When Opalescence jumped to attack her, Rattaloo dodged her claws, causing Opal to crash into the side of the house, shaking the key free from the hook inside. Moments later, an exhausted Rattaloo joined her, still panting for air. Did you... Get the key. Sure did. Great job, Rattaloo. Let's get this to center shot. Quick. You know what I found out, girls? I can move a lot faster than you two can. And I'm a lot stronger, too. I wonder why that is. No idea, Rattaloo. It's like you're an entirely different animal. Huh. Well, that's weird. Oh, anyway, come on. What are we waiting for? Let's get this key to cinder shy. about 20 other mares fairy tale ending? Oh yeah, that. I forgot about that. Well, surely one of them is my beloved. I'm sure I could tell them apart once I see them all once more. You won't have to. Yeah, the glass horseshoe fits me. I'm obviously your princess. Oh, Dashy, we're gonna be together forever and ever and ever. My, uh, you sure are a lot more energized than I remember you last night, my love. That's because I always wake up to a nice cup of coffee. Puts the bounce right back into my, well, my bounce. Actually, your highness, I was not referring to my daughters. Huh? I was referring to me, as it is I, your beloved princess, to be. <laughs> but, mother... Hush, child, and give me the horseshoe at once. Lady Rarity said, taking the horseshoe from Paella before she could protest. See? The horseshoe so clearly fits me, my love. Whisk me away to our happily ever after. I'm pretty sure my love wasn't a unicorn. In fact, come to think of it, I'm pretty sure she was a pegasus. We did dance in flight after all. You're just remembering that detail now? I flew with magic, of course. But I'm your love. No, it's me! No, I am! Lady Rarity and her daughters gasped when they saw Cindershy enter the room. Lady Rarity growled under her breath and realized she was still wearing the glass horseshoe. Thinking fast, she slammed her hoof down on the ground, shattering the horseshoe to pieces. No! That was the only real clue we had! You don't need any more clues. Clearly the horseshoe fit me, and therefore I must become the princess. You're wrong! I could never forget the face of my one true love. You could what? I've searched all day for you. Would you be my princess? I... I don't know what to say. Say yes! Seriously, is no pony going to point out that the magic wore off on everything else except the shoes? Shh! Don't interrupt the love scene! She can understand us! I told you guys! Point Rattaloo! Yes! Yes, of course I will marry you! And so it was that Cindershy's dream finally did come true. She was soon wed to the prince and became a princess, never again having to work for her wicked stepmother and stepsisters. The Cutie Mouse Crusaders had finally accomplished their great quest and decided to live their lives in the castle with Cindershy, where they could be pampered and treated like the little heroes that they were. Cindershy's family eventually apologized for their behavior and begged to be allowed into the castle. After lengthy teachings of kindness, they were finally able to live in the castle alongside Cindershy, whom they accepted as their family. And so, they all lived happily ever after. The end. We 
Wait a minute. Cindershine forgave them? After all that they put her through, she forgave them? What kind of story is this? Oh, they're asleep. <laughs>